Hey, hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Tiller Coaching. All right, it's day 14. Glad to be with you. We are continuing on with these objections that Paul is addressing. And today's section, frankly, is very similar to yesterday's. Um, in fact, it, like beyond being a natural um, extension of yesterday's, I actually kind of think that today's question is the, the most obvious first question. It probably should have been done first, but I, I don't need to be critical of Paul. I think he's doing a, a pretty decent job. So, you know, let's let him do however he thinks is, is uh, good and right. So, um, yeah, with, with that as the backdrop, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and dig in. This is Romans chapter 6, starting at verse 15. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, so basically the question, the objection that uh, Paul is, is uh, you know, attacking here is, does it matter if we sin since we are under grace and not the law? And spoiler alert, yes, of course it matters. Um, it, it matters for uh, like so many reasons, but I think Paul has a really um, good argument. And, um, you know, outside of the fact that he seems really insulting to the Roman people, <laughs> like, did you catch that verse? Verse 19, he says, I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. Like, if, if I'm a Roman reading this, I'm like, all right, Paul, like, I'm sorry I'm not as, like, at your level. I'm like, I'm not a dumb dumb though. You don't have to insult me. I don't think he's being insulting. I think he's talking very, like, conversational to, like, there's a lot of yous in this section. It's the same way if you're sitting down with someone, you'd be like, oh, you know, you do this, you do that. Like, um, it, it really isn't insulting. It's like, if I was sitting with someone and said, well, you know, you can't fly because you don't have wings. I'm, I'm stating something that's obvious for both of us, but I'm not, you know, lumping myself in. I'm just talking to you. I think that's what he's doing. Although he probably would have won um, saying it very, uh, you know, uh, unified, you know, like, you know, since I, this is complicated because we're limited, but whatever. Uh, that, I'm, I'm wasting time on something I shouldn't waste time on. Okay. I got really excited preparing for today's section um, because I found another like picture in my mind of um, what all this means. Like, okay, a couple days ago, we uh, had this picture of being stuck between two atoms and we got the first atom and then we've got the unatom that, you know, undoes what the first atom did and um, we can get unstuck because of, of, of the grace of Jesus. Like, that's awesome. Like, I love that so much. But in the same way, um, this section starts to talk about fruit and think about it. The, the whole problem started because of fruit. The, the first Adam, you know, sinned with fruit. And then we go over here and, and you know, Paul is talking about living fruitful lives. Like the, the way to get unstuck is to live fruitful lives. It's, it's why sin is important. Like we need to avoid sin because, well, check this out. Verses 20 through 22 say this. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you've been set free from sin and, and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. I had to repeat that because it's important. 
living fruitful lives is is important. We have to die to sin so that we can overcome the sin of the first fruit and the sin that like you know, wreaks havoc in us all the time. Sin, simply put, sin prevents us from living fruitful lives. So, you know, as I, I want to limit our time here today, I just, I want to ask you, like, is there sin in your life that is preventing you from living fruitful life? Like, do you have small runty fruit? Do you have no fruit at all? Like, um, it, it's, it's almost a hard thing to picture. Like, well, what does that actually look like? But I don't know. Ask your friends, ask your family, ask your pastor, ask, um, you know, people around you that know you. Like, do, do I, am I living a fruitful life? Because I, I want to get beyond these two atoms. Like, this is important. I don't want to die to sin. Okay, so, um, gosh, I'm trying to stay at five minutes. I'm, I'm giving it my best shot. All this stuff is so good, though. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we uh, continue on to Romans chapter 7. I will see you then. Thank you.